be a great accomplishment, uh, especially in this era, to uh, win back-to-back -back cups. It's an unbelievable trophy when you really think about uh, the history of it and, and the size it was at one point in time and where it is now and all the names that are on that trophy. Uh, you know, certainly would be something special. Definitely, it's an exciting time. Uh, you know, you're not just you know playing the Stanley Cup, but playing against him. You know, he's he's got the reputation of, of being you know, one of the great clutch goalies. This is going to be our toughest cha the toughest challenge so far, and they have a great uh, great team. Come to this point, uh, I don't know if there is really an underdog come to play out the finals. I mean, both these teams have have done you know exceptional jobs to get to this point. Welcome to Classic Series on the NHL Network. I'm Todd Lewis along with Dave Reed. Today we're taking a look at the Colorado Avalanche and New Jersey Devils Stanley Cup Final from 2001. Of course, Dave Reed, a member of those Colorado Avalanche. Let's take a look ahead to preview this series now. The defending champion Devils, led by coach Larry Robinson, had another stellar regular season, finishing with 111 points their fifth straight 100-plus point season, good enough for first in the Eastern Conference. Patrick Eliash led the team with 96 points, a new career high. Marty Brodeur finished with 42 wins, his sixth consecutive 30-plus win campaign, joining the NHL elite in that category. New Jersey was 12-6 heading into the finals, their biggest scare coming at the hands of the Maple Leafs in round two. The Devils coming back from a 3-2 deficit to win the series, rallying around a vicious elbow suffered by Scott Niedermeyer, thrown by Toronto enforcer Ty Domi in game number five. Meanwhile, the Avalanche were poised to knock off the defending champs, finishing the season with 118 points and winning the President's Trophy. Joe Sackick scored 54 goals and racked up 118 points. Patrick Waugh earned 40 wins for the first time in his illustrious career, and the acquisition of Rob Blake at the trading deadline had the Avs ready for their mission. Mission 16W. Simple, 16 wins and the cup is yours. No one wanted it more than their longtime NHL veteran, Ray Borg. He had come close a couple of times as a member of the Boston Bruins, but was never able to sip from the mug. He made it clear he came to Denver to win the cup, and this would be Raymond's final push in his 22-year career. The Avs were three quarters of the way home, 12 and four heading into the finals. However, the nasty seven game series versus the LA Kings in round two claimed the services of Peter Forsberg. Forsberg having to undergo emergency surgery to have his ruptured spleen removed after the Avs defeated the Kings in game seven. His services would be lost for the remainder of the postseason. The Avalanche were convinced they could overcome this setback. All right, so no Peter Forsberg, and the New Jersey Devils have handled the Colorado Avalanche pretty well through the regular season. That's a pretty tough task you guys got. Both games against New Jersey for the Colorado Avalanche, we played absolutely terrible. They dominated us. So, yes, if the regular season was any indication what was going to happen in this playoff series, New Jersey Devils were going to walk all over us. But, as they always say, the playoffs is a completely different season, and it definitely was for us, and that's the way we were looking at it. We knew we didn't have Peter, and that we were a little concerned about. We knew our guys were scoring some goals. Joe Sackick was playing phenomenal throughout the playoffs. We had a new line with Chris Drury and Vili Neiman that had stepped up and Dan Hynode had moved up to the second line and they were actually producing some goals in the third round against St. Louis. So we we're feeling pretty good even though we didn't have Peter Forsberg. All right, game one of the Stanley Cup final between the Devils and the Colorado Avalanche. The crowd was electric for game one in Colorado. Both teams were anxious to get play underway. New Jersey would get the first good chance on goal. Scott Gomez testing Patrick Waugh with a knuckler from 60 feet. Avalanche captain Joe Sackick would return the favor, handing Marty Brodeur his first action of the contest. Once the teams found their legs, it was Colorado who seemed to have the early momentum. Adam Foote had the first real scoring chance of the game. A hard one-timer forced Martin Brodeur to be sharp, and Joe Sackick would keep the chances coming with a nice spin-around effort, but again, Brodeur turned him aside. The Avs captain was having a great start, and midway through the first, his speed would be rewarded. Hange is up there, hit for second. Physical play was a factor in the period. Rob Blake would send the Devils an early message at the expense of Randy McKay. New Jersey would press for the equalizer for the remainder of the first, but Patrick Waugh would not be beaten. 
In the second, Randy McKay would be victimized once again. An awkward collision with Ray Bork in the neutral zone would send him to the locker room with a fractured left hand. The Avs seemed to have all the momentum and kept it coming. Tapped into the corner. Colorado attacking. Clearly, the Avalanche were in control. Any effort put together by New Jersey was turned away by Patrick Waugh. The Devils would turn to the body to try and get something going. But clearly, the Avs were getting to them early in this series, and a little four-on-four -four action is all their captain needed to continue his offensive clinic. Out there, a sack, Hank. comes in, fakes, comes in a goal! The third period would be no different. Defending champs having a tough time containing the Avalanche forwards, and any missed cue by Colorado would be corrected by the solid play of Patrick Waugh. New Jersey was not sharp, and the Avalanche seemed to take advantage at every opportunity they got. Getting rough again out there now. Dingman is nailed again by O'Donnell. Gets it back. They score! With the contest seemingly out of reach, New Jersey would continue to battle, trying to build and take something positive into Game 2. The Avalanche would not budge, and late in the period, they would pad their lead on a goal by Steve Reinprecht to make it 5-0. Brodeur and the Devils would have to regroup as the Avalanche would win by the 5-0 margin. Pat Bravois making 18 saves for his 18th career playoff shutout, extending his own NHL record. Joe was simply Joe. I think, uh, once again, uh, gave, us, uh, gave us a great game, gave us some big goals. Like, uh, hey, Joe Sackick for us, like it's, it's pretty normal to see performances like tonight. I don't think that, uh, other than it right in the third period, I don't think Blakey or Ray or, or Foote got hit all night, and certainly Joe never uh, could have wore eggs in his pants. He didn't get, uh, you know, our guys were getting hit left and right. So a big shout-out victory for the Colorado Avalanche in game number one over the New Jersey Devils. Dave, I guess you got a little bit of revenge for the regular season. Yeah, it kind of worked the opposite way. This was totally unexpected. We came out flying. We were skating very well, and New Jersey seemed to be standing around a lot. Whether they felt that they had gone through a pretty easy series against the Penguins, they were going to carry that over because of the two regular season games they played against us. It didn't work out that way. Joe Sackick was absolutely on fire, and without Peter Forsberg, Everybody stepped their game up. Our defensive game was strong. Patrick was there when we needed him. We scored a goal in the first, a couple in the second, a couple in the third. It was well spread out, and it was something that this team needed. Uh, it was a big confidence booster knowing the way the regular season had gone. All right, a big shutout victory for the Colorado Avalanche in game number one. Could they go up two games to nothing? Let's find out. Game two and the fans of the Pepsi Center going crazy, hoping that the Avalanche could continue where they left off in game one. Early, it seemed that Colorado's M.O. was to go after Marty Brodeur and try to keep him off his game. It proved unsuccessful. The New Jersey netminder appeared to be stronger, standing tall and turning away the early avalanche opportunities. The same could be said about the Devils. However, their target would be Joe Sackick. It did not seem to be paying off either. Sackick nor the Avs would take the bait. The avalanche continued their physical attack. Forward Sean Podine's hit on Sergei Brelin was enough to draw a retaliation minor. It seemed to be just the tonic Sackick and the Avs needed to get things going. Great pressure here. A shot. Sackick is there. Rebound. No. Now it rolls to the left. They score. What action. Coach Larry Robinson would have to try and right the ship and get his team back on course before the Avs struck again, and the hole became too large. The message seemed to be received, but it was an unlikely hero who got the Devils on the board. It's outside the line on a race for it. Corkum, he's going to get in there. Corkum going in, scores! Bob Corkum replacing the injured Randy McKay. McKay out due to the collision with Ray Bork in game number one. Corkum's goal ending Patrick Waugh's scoreless streak at 227 minutes, 41 seconds in the finals. Roy missing the record set by Clint Benedict from 1923 to 26 by a mere 1 minute 41 seconds. Roy and his mates appeared to bounce back. Patrick making a couple of saves shortly thereafter as the Avalanche killed a two-man advantage. However, just as the penalty expired, the devil struck. Played back by the Billy for Wiedemar! Stop! Score! 
In the second, the Devils continued to grow stronger, trapping the Avs and minimizing their chances. Shots on goal were hard to come by, and the Avs appeared to be losing their grip. Marty Brodeur was reading the play very well, looking much stronger with the one-goal lead. The physical play never stopped, each of the teams battling for every inch of open ice. This trend continued in the third, Colorado having trouble producing any shots on goal, and Marty Brodeur turning away everything they could muster, including the Alex Tangay deflection. Joe Sackick would do everything trying to spark his teammates, from sacrificing the body and battling with Devils captain Scott Stevens, meanwhile using his speed along the boards to gain open ice and generate scoring chances. It seemed that now the ice had been tilted in favor of the Devils and time was running short. A 2-1 victory for New Jersey and all the momentum heading back to the Swamp for game number three. That's what the Stanley Cup's all about. The Stanley Cup playoffs is finding uh, ways to win games, and we found uh, two guys that uh, work very hard and don't get the credit they deserve. And uh, it was a uh, big two goals. Turner and Corky, they, they they provide so much in the locker room, and to see them get a goal, it it makes it uh, takes pressure off all of us. And they were the key tonight. Got to give them credit, but I don't think we did the little things that we did in Game One to get the win, and that's something that we've got to regroup, come out in Game Three, and start doing those. Certainly a much closer game in game number two. More of what we were expecting between these two teams. New Jersey Devils coming out on top with a one-goal victory. And, well, maybe the momentum shifted back towards the New Jersey Devils. Maybe did your team perhaps think they got it a little bit easy in game number one and might be a little easier than they were anticipating? We came out a little sluggish. New Jersey came out very strong in the first period and outshot us pretty good. And they were up early in the game on us. And the problem was we continued to try to carry the puck and handle the puck and skate through their trap. They played a perfect trap game. They shut us down. We outshot them 8-2 to two in the third period, but there was all outside shots. We did not use a dump in, and we did not try to skate their defense. We didn't try to push New Jersey Devils back into their own zone. We played in the neutral zone right where they wanted to, and we got caught at the, on a power play on their uh, – Bob Corkum scored the goal. We got caught pinching in. Uh, something we didn't want to do and he went down and scored one second after we had just finished a power play so that really hurt but uh, new, you got to give New Jersey credit they came out and played a fantastic game they played their system and uh, we were mesmerized by it and, but we learned from it. All right textbook game by the New Jersey Devils that evens this series at one game apiece. Still ahead on the show we head back to the swamp for game three and four. The Devils looking to expand on game two while Colorado looks to regain their momentum from game number one. Shoot the goal! Joe Sackey will get the goal and his 100th point. In front of Joe Sackett gives it to Dingo, he shoots and scores! And I believe Sackett will get an assist on this, Kenny, which will be point number 1,000. Back to Morris, look at the room he's got. Passes Sackett, shoots, he scores! There's 500 for Joe Sackett! And the crowd here standing ovation. Not for 600 for Super Joe! And that is the 1,600th point of his career. Joe Sackett is playing in another world right now. The Hart Trophy goes to Joe Sackett. Well, wow. it's been a pretty good week. Joe Sackett, one of the best leaders in the game in the last 20 years. New Jersey Devils got the split they were looking for in the first two games of the Stanley Cup Final against the Colorado Avalanche. Now, Dave, it's the Avs who have to regroup and get a victory on the road. Well, we, ha we had to go play in their building. We knew we had to win a game in their building. And the thing is, we had to win by using our game. And our game was all speed, forced the other team to make mistakes, and we didn't do it in Game 2. We did it in Game 1. And sure, New Jersey did play a poor game, but in Game 2, we didn't do it. Game 3, coming into the game, that was our focus. Let's win this game, let's get home ice back, and let's worry about Game 4 later. But get back to Colorado Avalanche hockey. All right, would the Avs play Avalanche hockey in Game number 3? Let's take a look. 
There were 19,040 on hand in New Jersey for Game 3 of the Best of 7 series. Colorado looking to exercise a demon, having not won in New Jersey since 1993, when they were known as the Quebec Nordique. The Devils were bringing all. The early momentum and an early power play was all they needed to get things going. Behind the net, it's centered for Holy. Another long shot. Jason Arnott's one-timer giving the Devils the start they had hoped for. Patrick Waugh did not seem shaken by the early tally, making a couple of saves and preserving the one-goal contest to give his team a chance to get back in the game. Hodeen is trying to get it out front. He does. The wraparound. Skula shoots. Scores. The seeing-eye shot over the shoulder of Marty Brodeur tied the game at one. New Jersey would have to tighten up defensively and wait for their chances. However, it seemed that Patrick Waugh had an answer for everything the Devils could come up with. Case in point, a wonderful stop on Patrick Eliash, for Waugh using his butterfly style to perfection. A little later, it was A-line mate Peter Sikora who would get a chance, but again, Roa was there making a great read on the play and poking the puck away, keeping the score tied at one. You have to be good to be lucky, and lucky to be good. Stopped outside the line, cross ice, and Roa has to leave the net. He was bumped, and it's empty! The goalie's best friend keeping the game tied, Roa obviously upset with his misplay, took his frustrations out on the net. But he could breathe easy, the game was still tied. The third period would provide a tentative start, but the Devils found themselves in the box and a huge face-off win would provide the Avs with a break. One by Colorado, Bork shoots, scores! Ray Bork! Bork's 41st career playoff goal put the Avalanche up 2-1 and they were less than 20 minutes from regaining the lead in the series. A little insurance is all that was needed and a crucial shot block by Billy Niemann is just what it would take. And the Avalanche bring it back to center ice. Drury gets up over the line, nice play! And Niemann right on goal, he scores! What a scoring play and Heino gets the goal! The Devils would not pack it in, fighting to the end. The A-line would press, Peter Sikora would get a chance, and Jason Arnott another on the rebound, but neither could beat Patrick Waugh. The Avs took Game 3, 3-1, three Colorado's first win in the Swamp since they were the Nordique in 1993, and regaining the momentum in the series. Well, it was a pretty good battle. I mean, uh, I think the, the main thing with us is we didn't lose our composure in the first. It was. 4-1 there in penalties, and uh, they got the first goal, then they got a 5-on-3. They're doing a lot of clutch and grab, and they're clogging up the middle of their net and uh, making it real tough to get goals, but it's not a time to get uh, frustrated. It's a time to, to work through it, and that's all it is, hard work. They worked really, really hard tonight, and they got the win. You're not going to win a lot, of, a lot of games or a lot of series uh, when you're not scoring goals, and right now uh, I mean, we've only scored three goals, I think, in, in three games. That's not going to win you a lot of games. A 3-1 victory for the Colorado Avalanche, and once again, the momentum shifts back to the Avs in the Stanley Cup Final over the New Jersey Devils. Uh, power plays for both teams worked out in this game, but uh, special teams certainly do play a factor. They really do. Both teams scored a power play goal in this game. This is a very close game. This is what everybody expected the series to be like. Right down to the wire, Ray Bork scores a power play goal, goal early in the third period, and that proved to be the game winner. But we were playing our game. We came out flying early. They came back at us. It was just a seesaw battle. And this is the way everybody expected this to go. Everybody thought after game two, the way New Jersey trapped, that the series was going to slow down. And it didn't go that way at all. It really developed into a, uh, a fast pace checking game. Uh, it was definitely a fast pace series. All right, Colorado Avalanche, two games to one over the Devils. Let's look at game four. Game four in the Swamp got off to a painful start for Devils forward Jason Arnott. An awkward carom off the boards and he would take a puck in the face. Arnott would leave for some early repairs and return, but later would leave after only 3.41 of ice time. It was the Devils who seemed stronger early in the contest, forcing the Avs back on their heels. Yet again, it was the Avalanche who got an early break. Hangay, nice play, right in front of the net, score! Rob Blake's goal broke the early goose egg and gave the Avs the lead. 
The Avs continued pressing with the teams playing a rare three-on-three. -three. Chris Drury and Ray Bork had a great chance to add to the lead, but a rolling puck prevented Bork from finishing the play. Patrick Waugh would continue to play the puck even after the near miscue in Game 3. When the second got underway, it was the avalanche pressing. Joe Sackick would get a little room to skate, but Marty Brodeur stood tall and kept the deficit at only one. Then on the power plate, the Avs committed a costly error. Sakura passes over in front, shot! The goal wasn't pretty, but a goal nonetheless. The Devils found themselves knotted at one on the shorthanded goal by Eliash. The momentum seemed to shift yet again, and the Devils continued to force Patrick Waugh to stay sharp. Alexander McGillney would get the best chance to put the Devils in front. A huge blast would beat Roy, but fortunately for Avs fans, he could not beat the goalpost. The seesaw battle continued when finally the Avalanche patience paid off. Back is delivering several checks. Another one right there. Drury scores! Can you believe this? Drury's spectacular goal coming on only the Avs' third shot in the period. The third period proved to be more of the same, each team with some scoring chances. The Devils with the majority of them, but Patrick Waugh was proving to be the great equalizer in the hockey game, until the unthinkable. Dallas Parker shot it into the corner, Waugh takes a look, sees Pandolfo, he's caught again, Pandolfo on a They tie the game! Roy's second turnover in the series resulted in Gomez's fifth goal of the playoffs and a tie hockey game at two. Just the break the Devils needed, and perhaps they had seen it coming. Patrick seemed unfazed by the blunder, continuing to make saves, keeping his team alive. Marty Brodeur would do the same, turning away any avalanche attack. Late in the period, the Devils got a chance. The defending Stanley Cup champions lead in that department. Looking to go ahead to Perez. There it is! Peter Sikora's goal proved to be the game winner. Yet another momentum shift as the series would head back to Denver. I saw the replay and I, you know, Patrick just missed it and Panda was right there and, you know, I, I don't even know if I yelled his name, he just threw it in front and knowing my luck right now, I'm shocked I didn't hit the post, but it went in. When that happened, it didn't change my play. I mean, I, I still was going outside if, but I just understood that on that play, I should have throw it on my forehand right away, but there was nobody there. And you know, if, even if I throw it there, I mean, they would have got the puck. The puck would have stayed in the zone, but at least I would have time to go back in my net. I'm really happy it happened. Uh, you know, it's uh, one of the breaks that we needed to get back in the series. And, uh, you know, we worked really hard for, for three periods. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's nice to see, a, you know, to see a break like that coming our way. You know, it wasn't for Patrick. Uh, you know, you guys talk about that bounce or, or that play, but, I mean, without him, uh, we don't even have a chance. That's a blowout tonight. 3-2 is the final. New Jersey Devils draw even with the Colorado Avalanche at two games apiece in the Stanley Cup final. So often we talk about Patrick Waugh and his great performances during the playoffs, but uh, we're maybe going to talk about him for another reason after this game. And it's sad that you have to talk about that because in this game, Patrick Waugh, had an unbelievable performance. You got to remember in this game, even though Patrick flubbed the puck when we were up two to one, that allowed them to really tap it in and tie it up two two. The Avs scored or shot the puck four times in each period at the net. So we had 12 shots on net in the whole game. New Jersey had 35. They dominated this game. We had no right being in this building with the New Jersey Devils. And everybody remembers the bad play that Patrick Waugh made to tie the game. But if Patrick Waugh didn't play so well, the game would have been. 5-2 or 6-2 and the only reason it was a 3-2 game was because of Patrick Waugh and even on the last goal it was a turnover I knew because I was on the ice on the game winning goal against it was a turnover in our zone and we left Patrick hanging on that one so even though he did blunder it and everybody knows he did and he'll admit it he still kept us in that game even though we lost. Very brave of you to admit that turnover by the way. All right Devils and Avs are now even at two games apiece. Still to come, Patrick Waugh looks to rebound from his disastrous mistake in game number four. And with games three and four in the bag, the series shifts back to Denver for a game one in what is now a best of three affair.
shot it into the corner. Waugh takes a look, sees Pandolfo, he's caught again. Pandolfo on a They tie the game. Series even at two games apiece between the Avalanche and the Devils. We saw the blunder again. Dave, do you just try to put that behind you and focus on game number five? We had a lot of veterans on the team, and Patrick Waugh is one of the veterans, and that's all we could do. Just put it behind you and say, let's not worry about it. And like I said, the game was Patrick's game. He was keeping us in the game. It wasn't like he cost us the game. Yeah, he made a blunder, but the rest of the team played absolutely terrible. Patrick Waugh played unbelievable that game, even though we lost. So, yeah, it, it didn't affect our locker room. All right, let's see if the Avs can turn it around in game number five. With the series back in Denver for what is now a best of three, the pressure was on Patrick Waugh to recover from his miscue in Game 4. Roy seemed to do fine early on as he was tested by John Madden. However, it was the Devils' A-line who came out with a purpose. Colorado player Haytner, Hodeen was knocked down. Here's Sikora's pass, score! A costly pinch by Ray Bork resulted in the two-on-one. The Avs were down 1-0 early and found themselves back on their heels. The Avalanche would have to regroup. They managed to gain some momentum, but Marty Brodeur had the answer for any chances, including a great diving save to rob Dave Reed on the backhand. The seesaw battle would continue, each team hoping for the next break. Eliash! Bork can't catch him! Eliash to Cora! Ray Bork making an exceptional diving stab to prevent the New Jersey scoring chance, setting up the Tangay score, perhaps making amends for the costly pinch that cost the Avs earlier. Colorado had regained some momentum, but the Devils would bounce right back. Breeze was up, got caught. And the is coming in running the McGillies. A costly line change by Colorado set up the give and go for Gomez and McGillney. New Jersey found themselves back on top. Bob Hartley would have to tighten up the defensive play in the second if they were going to come back. The A-line was on the prowl in the second. Early on, Roy seemed to have the answers, but it appeared to be the devil's night. Niedermeyer was up, pitching in. Now, the long shot, score! Sergey Breland's deflection gave the Devils a dangerous two-goal lead, and the Avalanche would have to lay it all on the line to get back in this contest. The Avalanche continued pressing. Patrick Waugh had to remain sharp to preserve the two-goal deficit. Martin Brodeur was putting on quite a display. Colorado would have numerous chances late in the second, but Brodeur was up to the task, standing tall on the Alex Tangay opportunity and making a beautiful sliding stop to rob Eric Messier on the one-timer in front. The onus would be on Patrick Waugh to shut the door in the third for his team to have a chance. He would be tested early. Alex McGillney would get a breakaway, but Patrick turned him aside. Ray Bork, sensing the end was near, would try some physical play on Bobby Holy to ignite the avalanche. But no matter whatever Colorado could put together, they could not get past Marty Brodeur. Rob Blake would come close, intercepting the pass and orchestrating a rush, but the Avs were just not getting the bounces. Patrick Waugh was doing his best to keep Colorado in the game, making stops on a number of quality New Jersey opportunities. Colorado just gave up too many chances on this night. The Devils would add one more late in the third, forcing the Avalanche to the brink of elimination. The older guys stepped it up. I mean, you know, once Tangay scored, it was like, you know, maybe there was a little letdown on the bench, but, um, you know, Dano, Scotty, Bobby, I mean, those guys really just... Hey, we knew it was. We, we knew we weren't going to win. Not one, nothing. So you got to keep playing, and we just stuck to our game plan. There's no quit uh, in us, and um, obviously uh, we've we've lost uh, the last two games, and that's disappointing. But you know we're still alive, and um, you know we have all the intentions of coming back here for Game Seven. And we're in a situation where we have to uh, to win two games in a row, one game on the road, one game at home, and I think that we proved in the past that uh, we can do this. Another road victory by the New Jersey Devils, and they're now up three games to two over the Colorado Avalanche in this series. Okay, Dave, what happened? Was it the early goal that put you down, or was it something else? Oh, this one hurt. We didn't play a very strong game. We gave up too many wide-open opportunities, and Patrick just wasn't able to step up and make the saves like he normally did, and it was just a complete team breakdown 
in every facet of our game. We, we had one opportunity to kill a penalty. That didn't work. They scored on their only power play. It was just one of those games that you don't want to have, and we had it in our own building. We had the fans behind us. Everybody, everybody was behind us. We just did not come out and play a solid game from Patrick on out and we really put ourselves in a hole. All right, you are down three to two now, and the New Jersey Devils with a chance to win the cup at home in game six. Ahead on the show, it's back to New Jersey for game six. The Devils one game away from clinching their second straight Stanley Cup, while Ray Bork is one loss away from letting his last chance at Stanley slip away. The Colorado Avalanche are the 1996 Stanley Cup champions. Joe Sackett, his quest for the Stanley Cup is over. Super go! Make the three nothing for Colorado. A break to the field. The Avalanche are the 2001 Stanley Cup champions. When dreams do come true. Colorado Avalanche trailing the New Jersey Devils three games to two in this Stanley Cup final. And I guess, Dave, this is where the veterans have to step up. And this was where Ray Bork stepped up. This was going to be it for Ray Bork. This was his, could be his final game. If he loses this game, New Jersey wins the Stanley Cup. And chances were good. Everybody knew that Ray was going to be retiring at the end of the season. So Ray stood up before the game and pretty much said, he just said a few words. He just told the guys, said, you know what, this is it. Let's do it right now. It's uh, do or die. And he didn't come out and say, you know what, it's me we're doing it for. But he just said, let's win this game. That was pretty much it. And uh, everybody knew it. And we went out. And we didn't play that way early, but it, it worked out. All right, Colorado Avalanche in a must-win situation at the Meadowlands taking on the Devils. The atmosphere in New Jersey was electric for game number six. The Avs sensing the urgency of the task at hand. Meanwhile, the Devils and their fans knew that heading back to Denver for game seven was not an option. Bobby Holik would land an early opportunity for New Jersey, but the puck would trickle just wide. The Devils seemed to be the first to get on the board. Scott Gomez managed to get the puck across the goal line. However, after review, the goal was called back, Gomez having kicked the puck across the line. Colorado would battle for their chances. Quality opportunities were hard to come by. Milan Haydu and his mates would bang away at the doorstep. Brodeur would not back down. It was going to be a lucky break that would break the goose egg. Back to the line from Sackett. Scored him a the goal. Matt is shrinking in. And Wall makes a big save. Unfortunately for Madden, the break was not his. Patrick Waugh standing tall making the save. Patrick would continue his strong play early and prevent the Devils from striking first and taking the lead. It was the wake-up call that Roy's teammates needed. A long shot by Adam Foote and the Avs were first on the scoreboard, just the start they had hoped for. Both Brodeur and his mates would have to shake it off and regroup for the second. However, it seemed that slowly the ice was tilting in favor of the avalanche. Puck loose in front of the net, kept away to the line, kept in by Skula, scores! No chance for Martin Brodeur. This screenshot finding its way to the back of the net. It would be gut check time for the Devils. New Jersey would gain some momentum and earn a couple of scoring chances. However, when Patrick Waugh was not there, it seemed his friend the post was. With the Devils frustrated and forcing for a goal, Colorado would get another break. There goes Drury. Can he make it by White? He does. And gets ready for the shot. Scores! Wow! Drury using his talents to gain time and space, the shot deflecting off the stick of Colin White, and the Avalanche would take a 3-0 lead into the third. New Jersey would come out physical in the final period, looking for anything positive to draw on. Unfortunately, it was not their night. Reed was in there for Colorado. He gets a pass out front. Tange scores! Colorado getting it done, doing it for their fallen comrade. The Devils could not get anything going. 
frustrated and upset, tensions boiled over at the end. A 4-0 victory for the Avalanche, a shutout for Patrick Watt, his second in the finals and fourth of the 2001 playoffs. Colorado was heading home for Game 7, while the Devils would have to ponder a chance wasted. This is something we worked hard for all year, is this opportunity, if they came to a Game 7, to have it on home ice. And, uh, um, yeah, the teams uh, uh, seem to have struggled uh, on home ice, but uh, I don't think that's going to be a factor next game. I think that we, we have to feel pretty good. I think uh, you know, players took charge. At, uh, you know, it was a big game tonight for us. It was do or die, and uh, you know, those guys deserve big credit. We played avalanche hockey. We got outworked. We got out hustled um, in every part of the game. When, when the game is over and you can't even pick a player that played well, in a huge game like this, it's, uh, it's very disappointing. Another road victory. It's the Colorado Avalanche who come up with a big win. And, well, Dave, let's talk about Patrick Waugh for the right we reasons. He had a great game. Oh, an unbelievable game. The first period alone, we're outshot 12 to 5. And if it wasn't for Patrick, that was it. The Stanley Cup was won right there in New Jersey. The thing that turned this game around was Adam Foote scoring a goal just under two minutes to go in the first period. New Jersey, like I said, they dominated us in the first period. Ray Bork had said some things that the guys really didn't respond. Adam Foote scored the goal late in the first period, and then the Colorado Avalanche took over, and we won the game fairly easily after that. But if it wasn't for Patrick in the first 18 minutes of the game, the, they would have presented the Stanley Cup that night to New Jersey. All right, turns into, though, a 4-0 shutout victory for the Colorado Avalanche. Still ahead. One by Colorado. Bork shoots, scores! Ray Bork firing a shot from inside the line. Just one of the many great plays by Raymond Bork. So many outstanding years for the Boston Bruins, now a member of the Colorado Avalanche. Let's take a look back. Few Bruin fans will ever forget the date. October the 11th, 1979. That was the night a young 18-year-old defenseman from Montreal stepped onto the ice and into hockey immortality. Ray Bork was quick to serve notice that he was something special. The accolades came almost immediately. At the conclusion of the 1979-80 season, Bork took home the Calder Trophy as the league's top rookie. In 81, he was voted to his first NHL All-Star team, an honor he would enjoy 17 more times as a Bruin. In 1996, the All-Star Game was held at the Fleet Center in Boston, and in a storybook finish, it was Bork who scored the game-winning goal in overtime as the East beat the West 5-4. MVP honors were added to his growing resume. Not since Bobby Orr had a Boston Blue Liner captured the hearts of Beantown, and yet it wasn't until 1987 that he picked up his first of five Norris trophies that go to the league's best defenseman. He retires as the NHL's top scoring defenseman with 410 goals and 1,579 points. But his numbers tell only part of the story. Bork eschewed the top salaries his contemporaries were seeking to stay true to his heart and the Bruins. His love and respect for the game, the team, and tradition was never more evident than on December 3, 1987, at a ceremony to honor Phil Esposito. Espo and Bork shared the number seven, and that night Bork skated to center ice where he promptly stripped off his number seven jersey and revealed a second jersey bearing the number 77, which he would wear to the end of his career. The number seven was retired to the rafters. But despite the accolades, something was missing. Bork made only two Stanley Cup final appearances in his almost 21 years as a Bruin. The personal accomplishments were nice, but Ray Bork yearned for a Stanley Cup. Then came March 6, 2000. The Bruins were struggling. The playoffs were a distant dream, and Bork had had enough. He wanted to be dealt to a contender. He was a bit stunned at the beginning, uh, but then said, uh, I said, this may or may not be your first choice, Ray, but we think it's a good team. He says, I do too. And that uh, uh, they would be a definite contender and that he had a lot of friends there. So in a deal that saw four other players and a draft pick change hands, Bork's nearly 21-year career with the Bruins ended, and a new chapter had begun in Colorado. But again, the postseason ended in disappointment. 
The Avalanche were eliminated by the Stars in the conference final, and once again, Raymond Bork was denied his chance at Lord Stanley's Cup. The disappointment of losing a game number seven for Raymond Bork, and you can bet that he or anybody else didn't want that to happen again, Dave. No, not at all, and Ray was very nervous. I sat beside him in the locker room, and when I got in, he was the first guy I saw. He was one of the first guys there. I asked him, Ray, how you doing coming into game seven? Uh, he was cursing and swearing at me because I was kind of chuckling. You could see he was just like a little kid. Everybody was nervous, but for Ray, I mean, this was it. This was game seven, and uh, he knew it. we had lost game seven in the semis the year before, and he didn't want to lose this one. This was for all the marbles. All right, let's get to it. Game number seven between the Avs and the Devils. The crowd in Denver was electric. Players and coaches on both sides knew the task at hand. It was either team's last chance to get the job done. Chris Drury would get the first good scoring chance. Marty Brodeur made the save and appeared strong early. At the other end, Patrick Waugh was strong as well, turning away the Devils on their first scoring chance. The feeling out process continued for most of the first half until some good forechecking by Alex Tangay paid off. Brodeur was away out, poked it up on the boards. Tangay stopped that and comes out. Tangay around the net, comes out with a shot. The ice was broken. Alex Tangay's wraparound effort got the abs on the board. Roa was playing strong, and his blunder from game four seemed to be in the distant past. Patrick Eliash and the Devils would have to regroup. Scott Stevens would try to spark his mates with some physical play, and Peter Sikora would get a chance. But Roa would get some help from the goalpost. If the bounces were any indication, it appeared Brandon Borg would be celebrating tonight. And in the second, the Avalanche picked up right where they left off. To center, that's a good play for second. It goes. Stop, rebound, score. Bring it down. Alex Tangay buried the Sackett rebound to extend the lead to 2-0. Marty Brodeur not getting the help he needed from his D. The crowd sensing the Avalanche were close. One more would be a backbreaker. A power play was all they needed. Power play starting well for Sackett. Again, Sackick faked the shot. Now Drift scores! Three nothing, Colorado! An unbelievable goal by Joe Sackick using Scott Stevens as a screen. The Avalanche were less than 40 minutes away from being champions. All they had to do was hang on. New Jersey would have to press in order to get back in the hockey game, but Patrick Waugh had an answer for everything. A high stick by Eric Messier on John Madden would give the Devil power play a chance to work. With a power play. Their first shot tonight. Get it in front. Sakura scores. Peter Sakura's power play goal would get the Devils back in the game. The next goal would be pivotal, and physical play came to the forefront. In the third, the Devils would press for another. Alex McGillney would get a chance again. Roa was there to shut the door. With less than 20 minutes to go, it was time to prepare the prize. The Devils would continue to go at Patrick Waugh, but he would continue to stymie the Devil shooters. Sakura moving up on a shorthanded situation. Down goes Waugh. And boy, that's a big save. With Patrick Waugh shutting the door, the countdown was on. And now, this is it. The Stanley Cup 2001. Oh. The winner of the Conn Smythe Trophy for the third time, Patrick Watt. There's one player who's waited a long time for Hoistus. Joe Sackett, come get the cup so he and the rest of your teammates can hoist it. You learn that it's not always going your way. And when it's not going your way, you have to maybe change a couple of little things, adjust a little part of your game, and you can turn it around. And Alex Tagge did. And, uh, you know, like tonight, like, uh, you know, he was probably our best player on the, out there. This one was, uh, was, a bit, uh, was a bit bumpy at times and, and, and um, adversity. And, and uh, there was a name missing on that thing. And... Uh, Today, I mean, it's, it's back to normal. What a feeling. Um, I, I, just, I, I just can't uh, describe it. It was, 
something Joe wanted to talk about after game six, and I wouldn't let him. Um, I said, we're going to have plenty of time uh, if we do uh, get it done, or when we're going to get it done, um, between uh, at the end of the game and, and when it's going to come out, uh, what we're going to do with it. He's had a long, great career, and uh, you know, congrats to him. It's unfortunate because uh, you know I hate to lose, and uh, I thought our team uh, was certainly as good as, good as that club, but uh, it wasn't our time this time. We couldn't lay it to the public that we were playing for Ray because, like, uh, hey, we just... We just wanted to stay on our plan, and uh, hey, in our heart, in our mind, like you know, we were playing for Ray. A very satisfying victory for the Colorado Avalanche. Three won the final. They win over the New Jersey Devils, and satisfying for a number of reasons. Of course, Raymond Bork, and of course, after the struggles that you endured through this series, you know, being down in the series, losing at home, and then being forced to win on the road. And it all started losing Peter Forsberg before the series, and two series earlier so the whole playoffs it was adversity and then with Ray being there and the, and the mission 16 W and all the excitement built up around that and just seeing the relief on Ray's face when he held the cup and uh, uh, that was worth it right there whether you can say you want it or not but just being on the same team as Ray Bork when he won the Stanley Cup was well worth it it was a fantastic run a fantastic playoff and a series that I'll uh, definitely never forget because uh, not alone with Ray Bork was it his last game to play, it was also mine. So it was one of those memories that uh, uh, will be with me uh, as long as I'm around. That's a pretty nice way to uh, go out of the National Hockey League. And, and Con Smythe for Patrick Waugh again. Again, unbelievable. Another guy, Joe Sackick. The battle was between Joe Sackick and Patrick uh, Waugh for the Con Smythe. And the big thing was the year before, Joe Sackick couldn't score. Coming into this one, Joe Sackick could do no wrong. And he led our team to the Stanley Cup and uh, Patrick sure did his share of playing well in the net. All right, two for Tangay in game number seven and the Colorado Avalanche win the series over the New Jersey Devils. Don't go away when we return. We'll take a look back at the best plays of the series and we'll crunch some numbers and see who comes out on top. Check out the NHL Network. Again, the shoots, he scores! The home hockey. Super Joe on a great pass, and he gets his 1,000th point in the NHL. Sackett in front. Save it Score! Sackett, two on one with Smith. Hands it across. Score! Yeah, win in overtime. And that is the 1,600th point of his career for Joe Sackett. And what a way to get the point. Tangay is up there, here comes Sackick, wow, the first is speed, yeah! Up there is Sackick, comes in, fakes, comes in a goal, Sackick, goal, Sackick, again! Winding up, and the pass, shot, score, stop by Wall, and the rebound is stopped by Wall! Tangay, nice play, right in front of the net, score! And he is nailed by Matt! Right there. Ray scores! And you believe this? CA comes up. Ryan Peck at the front of the net. Oh, shot blocked by Lover. Eliash. Bork can't catch him. Eliash to Cora. Oh! Bork can't catch him. 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 Bork this is a break. Again, dropped back by Elias. Elias stopped by Wall. It's a good play for Sackick. Here it comes. Stop, rebound, score. Again, Sackick fake the shot. Now Brits. Dave, it was a great battle between two great goaltenders, but uh, look at that goals against. Patrick Waugh, still the man. Oh, he was the man in that series. Phenomenal, and then no, no reason for him not to have won this third con Smythe. He was absolutely terrific. And you don't win Stanley Cups if you don't have good goaltending, and we had fantastic goaltending. Just that much better than Martin Brodeur, and that's why we won the Cup. Oh, it was a terrific series, and as you mentioned before, your final game in the NHL, uh, a very fond memory, I'm sure. Oh, great memory. Still have lots of pictures. <laughs> <laughs> for Dave Reed, I'm Todd Lewis. Thanks a lot for joining us tonight on Classic Series.